So like all of us, Har has been thinking about mangoes lately. And he actually has come up with a list of what he considers essential oddities. And these mangoes are not typical and as far as texture and flavor, but they, in, according to Har, are essential for anybody who has a collection of mangoes. There are so many distinct categories of flavor in mango. So some of those flavors a lot of people wouldn't even identify as mango. They're so distinct, uh, so different from one another. And most of these are considered super delicious by a minority of the people who try them. So most of these that I'll mention on this list, I really like. I'll mention two or three that I don't like all that much but that have a distinct flavor category that I know other people like a lot. We'll start with a rosa. Rosa is from Brazil. It's one of the few varieties of mangoes that fruit in the Amazon region of Brazil. Lowland equatorial tropics with heavy rain most of the year. The rosa fruits there. Most varieties that have been taken from Florida to the Amazon have grown huge trees but have never or almost never flowered or fruited. The Rosa is not one of those smooth creamy mangoes. It's actually kind of fibrous but the fiber doesn't stick into your teeth so much as some of the others. So there's a lot of fiber that makes for very firm texture, but it's a very chewable fiber. I like resinous flavors, and rosa pretty much tops the list for intensity of resinous flavor. It's also mildly sweet and quite tart. I usually eat it before it gets mushy ripe, while it's still firm enough uh, to be crunchy and tart. And the skin is great eaten with a pulp. Uh, the tree here is really tropical, uh, ripens its fruit along with one or two other varieties as the first in the year. And then usually it does a second or maybe even a third crop. It's quite productive. In the dry weather, the rosa is clean and pretty. Once the rains start, it'll be covered with big black spots. And where the, it's not covered with a big black spot, it'll still be a bright, pretty color. The name in Portuguese means pink because I guess most of the traditional roses were pink. So rose colored is pink. Here you go. This is Dot, uh, descended from Harry, and it's one of the favorite mangoes of Dorothy Zill, the wife of Lawrence Zill, who founded Zill Nursery. It's a rich, uh, firm flavored mango, I mean, firm textured mango. With a little bit of resin. It keeps amazingly well in the refrigerator. You can stick it in the back of the refrigerator in mid-season when this uh, ripens up and after everything else is finished you can find these shriveled up and back and they'll be really really good that way. It doesn't happen to be one of my favorites when it's fresh but so many other people give it rave reviews that have got to include it in the essential oddities list. This is Duncan, a super productive tree, very disease resistant. Uh, the fruits are usually in clusters like grapes, very clean, uh, very smooth texture. 
and quite tart. So sweet and tart. The very last ones of the crop are very richly sweet and I really like them then but the rest of the crop I'll have a piece, you know, for variety and then move on to something else. But there are quite a few persons who consider this their number one mango. And they come looking just for Duncan. Maybe they'll buy something else too, but they'll be very disappointed if there aren't Duncan. So, as, as I say, this is not one that a majority of people like but some people have to have it and everything else other than flavor I agree that this is a super treat. Uh, you can't beat a Duncan for productivity and ease of handling. You don't have to be a green thumb to do well with a Duncan. This is the Pettigrew. Pettigrew? They'll get four or five times the size. The tree has very narrow leaves, uh, pretty easy to recognize, usually very few fruits, but this tree has become more productive recently here at Truly Tropical. The flavor and aroma are very distinct. Uh, one, one mango that is descended from this uh, that more people know is the Gary. So you would need to have one or the other or both if you're trying to cover all the major mango flavor categories in your collection. The Pettigrew is a smooth texture. Oh my, I've got to smell that sap. It's just the best. The texture is smooth, it's sweet, very, very spicy, and supremely aromatic. If it has uh, mineral deficiency problems, such as not enough boron and calcium, there will be internal breakdown. That and the fact that the tree is usually of low productivity has prevented it from being vigorously marketed uh, as far as selling the trees. But I believe that right here near the coast and if you spray with nutritional sprays including copper and boron and zinc uh, and apply gypsum to the soil if it's sandy soil that you'll find that you can grow really fine Pettigrew mangoes. This is Cushman, also known as Big Yellow. And it does get big and round, kind of flattened at the poles, like a picture of a planet. For people who like the Hayden mango flavor, uh, they'll often find that Cushman is even tastier for them. If you don't let it get too mushy ripe, most people like Cushman. Very few of the connoisseurs though have listed it at the top of their list. But Mr. Crafton Clift, also known as Grafton Crafton, uh, list this as number one mango for him at least years ago when I last talked to him about it. He's been an influencer for years so a lot of you I'm sure have heard of Crafton and uh, consider his recommendation if you have room for quite a few trees. This is the Graham from the Caribbean islands. It's either descended from Julie or from a common ancestor with the Julie. Uh, these fruit will get much larger. Unlike the Julie tree which is dwarf, 
The gram is a medium vigor tree, a rather dense canopy, and it tends to fruit quite heavily, at least here at this location. And this tree has two crops on it right now. So these are from the early bloom, and over here there are some late bloom ones. The gram has a smooth texture. It's very sweet, a little bit of tartness if you eat it before it gets mushy, and quite a bit of resin. I like it quite a bit, and a lot of people from the Caribbean must have it. There again, this is one that not everyone goes for. Even Lawrence Zill, the founder of Zill Nursery, he described it as too strong tasting, but he had to have it because so many of his customers wanted it. So there again, an essential oddity. Some people uh, won't like it, but others really, really must have it. And it's certainly a tree that's easy to grow, at least here near the coast, in the influence of the sea breeze. This is a variety from Thailand, Pim Sein Moon. This is delicious at any stage of growth. These like this can be uh, crunched up like a green apple. Uh, the uh, sweet already. Unlike most mangoes when they're this green, most other mangoes are uh, sour and even bitter. These are sweet and mildly tart and crunchy. Then when they get just starting to ripe, they have yet another flavor and when they're fully ripe they're very sweet as well. Not as sweet as some of the others we've been talking about, but a, a smooth uh, pleasant sweetness. Uh, usually in Thailand these are consumed about this size or a little bigger. Uh, grated as so though grating cheese to make green mango salad which is a great delicacy. I like them that way but I like them fully ripe as well. A lot of the people that I've given to say, ah, okay, whatever, uh, but uh, if I can have eight or ten mangoes for lunch, I like Pim Sein Moon to be one of them. It's a very uh, distinct category of flavor. This is another variety from Thailand, uh, probably the most famous. It's the Nam Dok Mai. water of flower, as sweet as flower nectar. Usually very little indication of tartness, just very sweet, uh, usually pretty uncomplicated flavor and extremely smooth texture. A very flat seed. These trees usually produce uh, a medium crop and even out in wetter areas uh, the Nam Dok Mai will usually produce at least some fruit. Of all the varieties that have been taken from Florida to the Amazon region of Brazil, the Nam Dok Mai is the only one that is fruited there. So it is well adapted to high rain areas. This is Florigon. Like the Duncan, it's super productive holds fruits in clusters, kind of like grapes, and is very disease resistant. This is pretty typical of Florigon productivity. The texture is smooth, fiber free. It's a sweet tart flavor, quite tart with the sweetness especially earlier in the season. When most of the fruit have been picked off, then the last fruits of the season are very richly sweet and the tartness is mostly gone. 
I like them at the end of season. If you're not a green thumb and you're looking for an easy mango to, to grow, the Florigon and the Duncan uh, beat on. This is the coconut cream, one of the more famous of the no Zell varieties. It's not so new now, it's been out over 10 years, but uh, this has a distinct flavor unlike anything else I've tried. It doesn't happen to be one of my favorite flavors, but if you go online and read reviews, it's hard to find a mango with more rave reviews than the coconut cream. A lot of connoisseurs really, really like it. So if you're doing a collection and want all the flavor categories, don't forget the coconut cream. Probably the reason I don't get excited about it so much is uh, expectation. When you tell me it's going to taste like coconut, and I can't taste coconut in it, well then, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so there are a couple other mangoes with coconut in the name also, and I don't taste coconut in any of them. So I guess I have a deficiency there. This is the Madame Francis from Haiti. It gets quite large. It does have quite a bit of fiber. And it has a flavor that I really like. I think because it tastes similar to a mango that I used to eat in northern Brazil when I was a child. So this is one that I would really like to have in a collection. I call it an oddity because most of the people from other backgrounds that aren't from Haiti or uh, Brazil uh, don't get so excited about it usually. Although I have run into a couple of persons who bought this, imported in stores, and liked it really well and came here looking for it, uh, persons from other backgrounds. So it does suit the fancy of some. This is the famous ice cream mango from the Caribbean islands. I believe from the island of Tobago, is that right, by Trinidad? Usually these fruits are small and ugly. Uh, customers coming looking at a whole display of mangoes. Uh, if they're first timers, they never go, go for these first until someone gives them a sample. Then most people actually like the ice cream mango. It's quite a powerful flavor. It has quite a bit of resinous quality to it. And, and yet it's so smooth and rich that it does deserve the name ice cream. It has productivity issues even here in this ideal lo location for mangoes it usually doesn't produce well. Uh, perhaps if we sprayed it more it would produce better. But this is not one f for people who are not green thumbers. It's not easy to get a good crop from it. Some people get good crops on it when it's a young plant in containers, and then when the tree gets bigger and bushier, it stops producing. So probably a lot of pruning, keeping it small, and spraying would help you have better luck with it. Uh, it's a tree that grows less vigorously than most, although it's not truly dwarf like a Julie. Uh, so it is something that you could pretty easily include in a collection in a large container. This is the Dwarf Hawaiian. Always small like this. In dry weather they can be really pretty, and in wet weather they're really ugly. So sometimes they're small, ugly, and have a big seed, and some fiber. So people criticize it a lot for some of those qualities, but uh, those of us who have uh, learned to look for it in the spring before hardly any 
something else ripens, usually include this among our top favorites. The flavor is really good. If you eat it before it's fully mushy, uh, it has rich sweetness and some tartness and some resin, some spice, uh, pretty much everything that I like in a mango. And I, I do eat the skins of these. So it's real easy to munch down on, on several of these. This is the Chokanan from Thailand. The seeds are used for rootstock a lot in Thailand. And some people uh, badmouth it because of that. But when I have a bucket of mangoes for lunch, I like to have a Chokanan in there. It's a firm, uh, nicely flavored mango, very different flavor from many of the others. The seed is kind of large, the fruit's kind of small, uh, but the tree is very productive, has usually a pretty long season, or multiple crops, and none of the other fruit of the many grown here have this category of flavor. So I like it quite a bit. And some of the uh, some of the customers who come here specifically ask for this also. This is the Baptiste mango from Haiti. Some people call it the dry mango. It's one that you can eat in your Sunday best without dribbling down your white shirt. The flavor is spicy, resinous, uh, sweet, and if it's not too fully ripe, it has some tartness as well. Uh, I think it's quite a nice balance of flavor. Uh, a few people come asking for this. Uh, a lot of people do not care for it. That's why I put it in a list of essential oddities. It has a, a distinct flavor. The tree doesn't take up much room in a collection. You could keep this in a large pot for many years. It grows about the same rate as a julie. It, it's a dwarf. Uh, 